Ever wondered what that was? That sound was from an anime. These are called Kyoshigi. They are used in traditional Japanese performances to announce the start of a show. And that's what they're doing here. So welcome to Harry Potter vs. Spike Spiegel. This is going to be a presentation about various mythic tropes in the West versus Japan and how those are different. So um, I have handouts because I like to do handouts. Do there and just pass them along. Thank you. A lot of fights, Spike Steel were totally with Harry Potter, <laughs> who is the deadliest warrior. Indeed. So, first background for those of you who haven't seen my panels before, why do I deserve to be doing this panel? I've been an anime fan for about 20 years now. I've seen over 800 different anime TV series, movies, OVAs, etc. Own well over a thousand anime DVDs and Blu-rays, and on my way to 2,000 thanks to the dealers' room here today. Um, I've also read a lot of books uh, about anime and manga. Come on in, close your face. Um, so I've actually done quite a bit of research about different um, myths and stuff. I've also read various Japanese novels, things along those lines, to get a better idea of how all this works. Um, so a few quick ground rules for how this is going to kind of um, go along. Feel free to raise your hand and ask questions as we go. I'd much rather you ask a question while it's fresh in your mind. We all use Twitter way too much to actually hold something in our heads for 20 minutes. So um, feel free to just you know, ask questions as we go. And there'll be plenty of time at the end for discussions talking about various stuff. This is going to sort of move from one topic to the next as time goes on. There's a lot of these things that don't really flow, obviously, from one thing to the next. That's kind of how things go. That's why there are still plenty of spaces you guys want to uh, sit down. Um, and obviously, we are really good at noticing trends and patterns and things. So one of the first things we do is we notice, you know, I'll, I'll mention a trope and you'll say, I know that there are some anime that aren't like that, and I agree. There's going to be lots of exceptions to what I'm going to talk about. I'm talking about some overall major trends. All right, so there, there are basically three problems um, that come up when you start talking about differences in culture. And the first is the belief that all cultures are essentially the same, right? We're all pretty much exactly the same and that any sort of myths or whatever are just icing on the cake. It doesn't even have any effect. I don't believe that's true. I believe that the stories that we tell and the myths that we all believe have an impact on us. And thus you can understand something about culture and such via um, uh, the myths and tropes of those cultures. The, one of the other mistakes you can make is by saying that every culture makes people completely different and incomprehensible to each other. Uh, it's where a lot of the weird wacky Japan stuff comes from. Right, where uh, Japan just this wacky thing that nobody can understand, ha ha ha. And A, let's be honest, that's kind of, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of demeaning, frankly, to other cultures to say, well, we just can't understand them because they're too weird. I don't think that's right either. I think you can understand other cultures as you dive into them and understand more about them. Um, the third mistake you can make is kind of similar to that, which is you assume that Culture and tropes and myths <laughs> determine people's behavior and beliefs, right? Um, that they have this huge impact on people. Um, and that, you know, as long as you know the kinds of stories that are told Japanese kids, you know how they're going to grow up. And that's not right either. So repeat to yourself, they're just tropes. You should really just relax, right? Not a big deal. Not a big deal. All right, so let's talk about heroes. It's interesting noticing how Americans and folks in the West build heroes versus folks in Japan. Over here, our heroes tend to be superheroes or very exceptional people. Very they, individualistic. Very individualistic. Think Beowulf, Hercules, Gilgamesh. All these people are either, either literally demigods or have these really amazing abilities and beliefs. And even going over to today, you know, the protagonists are, you know, the girl with dragon tattoos, not just a hacker, she's a super hacker, and she's athletic, and she does all these special things. Harry Potter is not just the boy who lived, he is also a um, pretty good magic user, he's a natural leader, he also knows parcel tongue, and he has this danger sense in his head, um, and he's the center of all these various issues. Rowling tended to throw a lot of kind of adjectives on top of Harry Potter, if you will, making him more and more exceptional. And I should point out, what I'm describing through all this presentation is not to say that, you know, Japan good, West bad. I'm talking about just different ways of approaching this. Contrast that over to anime, where our heroes tend to be closer to normal people. 
The first episode of Pokemon does not, start, does not start off with Ash being told he has to collect all the Pokemon so he can defeat an evil wizard who's going to destroy the world. Right? He's just some kid who goes out to collect Pokemon. He's a more normal person, except he can kind of come back from the dead. That's a whole different thing. Um, you know, Spike is certainly... Pokemon the first movie, whole other thing. Um, Spike is certainly a very good martial artist, but he's not a particularly great shot. Um, there's a chair up here. Um, he's not even being pursued by the triads. They kind, of, they kind of don't even care about him anymore. So he has this myster mysterious past and stuff going on, but he is certainly not this center of multiple planetary conspiracy, right? He's kind of just a guy. Um, moreover, when these characters do have a power, those powers are often compensated in other ways. So you may have some supernatural power, but you're kind of a jerk. Um, or people don't like you, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely, there tends to be a lot more compensation for those unusual abilities. It's not all positive. Shoujo take this even further. <laughs> Try pitching, imagine pitching your average shoujo romance series to like a Hollywood executive. Right, okay, so, so we're going to have this, this girl, and she falls in love with a guy, and the show is about like them being boyfriend and girlfriend. And then they fight vampires, right? You know, they do... No, 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 no. Yeah. Um, you know, no, they, they, they don't do anything special. You know, they just kind of go out. But she's a member of a band or something, right? Like, she's... The, no, no. She's not very powerful, popular. She doesn't go to any clubs. She just kind of has one or two friends. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Right? We don't know how to tell these stories about girls, it seems. It's, it's, it's sad. But it's all the time in anime because we know, we, or the Japanese staff, they know how to tell these stories. They know how to make simple, normal people interesting. Well, depending on the show. Now, let's go sort of deeper into the whole idea of the chosen one, right? The, the, the mythic hero. And this gets interesting as well. Um, over here, being chosen gives you power and advantage, right? Getting the Green Lantern Ring is a really nice thing. Having Excalibur is a good thing. It, it is a positive thing to have. It lets you, you know, kill things. Um, it lets you do other stuff. But there's nothing about Excalibur that, that's inherently a problem. Contrast that with most Magical Girl series, right? <laughs> being chosen makes you a target and creates trouble for you. Think about how often a magical, in a Magical Girl series, the plot of the show, or the plot of the episode is about the fact that they are fighting somebody who is one of their classmates and has been tricked. Or they need to get to some special thing in the, in the real world, in their normal life, they can't get to because they're fighting something. It seems to happen in every other episode in Magical Girl. How often is being Clark Kent a problem for Superman? Rarely. Exactly. How often is being Batman a problem for Bruce Wayne? Never. Exactly. We, you know, every so often we, we do see those things a little bit in some of the comics. But we generally avoid that. Whereas in Japan, so there's a saying in Japan, uh, the nail that sticks up will get hammered back down. Right? So you don't want to be special because being special makes, you, makes you a target. It means that you suddenly have lots of responsibilities that kind of suck. In a, lot of, in a lot of ways, and can get you killed. Uh, but enough of it, enough of it. Um, now, if you're talking about myths, you kind of have to, by law, mention Joseph Campbell and the hero's journey. Uh, he was one of the great researchers into myth and, and such things in the Western canon. And he invented this thing called the monomyth. I actually dislike the term monomyth because it implies that there is a single myth. And that's not really what he meant by the term. He meant that he read lots and lots of traditional myths and traditional hero stories in various cultures, and he noticed a lot of common trends. And he identified 13 things that often happen in these mythical stories. And what he was saying is not that every story will follow this. What he's saying is that there's a 30% chance that any given one of these will show up in any given mythic story, right? So you see these things cropping up a lot. Think Star Wars Episode Four. 
right, call to adventure, refuses a call, oh, I can't go to Anchorhead, crosses the threshold when uh, his uh, aunt and uncle are killed, go to trials, so forth and so on. I mean, the goddess, um, Leia. Uh, and so all of these various things. Now, again, you don't see this in, a, in every single story. There is no one as temptress in Star Wars. Um, but you follow these various, various patterns throughout the story. Exactly. <laughs> totally. Um, um, refusal to return, rescue from without, atonement with the father. Totally. So, the, uh, the interesting thing about Joseph Campbell, though, is he didn't read a lot of Japanese or other Asian myths. He didn't really incorporate all of those. He did read a few. But he wasn't really paying attention to how Asian cultures do this. And there's, some, there's a completely different pattern that works its way through Japanese stories. If you remember one thing from this presentation, one word, I hope you remember this one. Wow. 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 <laughs> so wa is a Japanese word that refers to the, the functioning of the group, the way a group comes together and gets things done as a group and how everyone's balanced against each other. It does not mean that everyone loves each other. It does not mean that everyone likes who else is on the team. It means they've all found and slotted into their place in the team. Think Cowboy Bebop, right? Everyone has their role, their things to do. They may snipe, they may argue, but they function as a team, kind of. Um, but you get the idea. Um, think your, your average Shonen series, you know. Um, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura, they may argue a lot, but they find how to fight with each other. And they, they find how, how to fight, uh, you, you know what I mean. Um, so, almost all Japanese stories can be seen of as two variations on this. Either Wa is broken, and the story is about Wa being restored within the group, or Wa does not exist and is then forged. The team finds a way to function. Um, a great example of the first is Kiki's delivery service. Right? Kiki has her life, she has her friends, she has her family. That all gets broken, and the story is about her finding herself uh, and finding a new wall with a new group. It is interesting to note that one of the first things that happens after Kiki leaves is she, she finds Tombo, and she does not have a relationship with Tombo. Once that relationship is resolved, whoops. Ah, sorry, I lost the microphone. I hate that. Need to be more careful with, uh, with this. There we go. Once that relationship is resolved, the movie is over. Because she's found her walk. Right? I don't know about you guys, when I saw Kiki's Livery Service and that happened, I was like, we're ending now? Really? Okay. Um, it's a little bit abrupt to, to us, but to them, she's, she's resolved all of her social obligations. There's nothing left to do. A good example of the alternate where they're forging law is the melancholy of Harvey and Mia. Right? None of them know each other. They know of each other. But they're kind of random people all pulled together by Harvey and forged into law. It is interesting to note that the final episode in chronological order in Harvey is the um, Quiet Days in the Rain episode. Right? Where they're all just in the clubhouse. Because what does that episode show you? It shows you that they've all found their law. They're, they're all comfortable with what they're doing together in this group. Very, very interesting. And the disappearance happens and that wall gets broken. Right, exactly. And the disappearance is all about that, that wall getting changed and restored and all that stuff. Exactly. Um, now, of course, in more episodic adventure stories, you don't see wall challenged as much, right? That's not moving around as much. Um, that said, Japanese stories and anime in particular are much more willing to challenge and, and rearrange wall in these stories. You will see members of groups disappear and reappear and change around. People get angry and leave and come back. It does happen more often in anime over here. You know, think about sitcoms over here. How often does Wa change? Never. You know, they keep everyone in there exactly the same way. Although there is one sitcom that I would say does challenge Wa, I think it's one of the reasons why it is so successful, and that is, uh, well, not that. Um, I think Naruto's a good example, actually, of a show that challenges Wa constantly. It's one of the shows, I think it's one of the reasons why Naruto is so popular, is because they are willing to deal with group dynamics constantly. It's all about that. And folks figuring out 
where they are in relation to every, everyone else, and then suddenly something else comes in and changes all that all around. It makes the show much more interesting than if it was just about, you know, fighting ninja. Um, but a sitcom over here that I think does that is Big Bang Theory, right? Over the course of seasons, that wad does change, and people get girlfriends, and all that stuff shifts around over time, and it's one of the reasons why the show stays relatively fresh. Um, and this is not to defend the Big Bang Theory, there's issues with the Big Bang Theory, I understand that. Um, but it, it does certainly do this. All right, so another major part of the hero's journey and these stories...